You gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta. All right, Drew. Thanks for doing that, dude. All right, so, it, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us. We have Ginger Licklider and Kara Donardo with us today. Thank you guys for coming in. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ginger, I would say you have one of the, uh, you are one of a few people that made a huge difference at FFL because a few years ago, when we nobody there was only a few people selling virtually mm-hmm. and some people were scared it couldn't be done mm-hmm. you had come out and sh- you shared your system with the whole company and a bunch of people loved it and we were able to people were able to increase their sales by selling virtually and seeing more people mm-hmm. and then also people that are not maybe they weren't able to drive around for some reason are able to get in this business. And I actually thought I went to the doctors one day and there was a bunch of people that were like dealing with some crazy stuff, Mm -hmm. like sitting in the uh, waiting room. And I was thinking, how cool is it that because of that change, someone who's going through, let's say maybe a medical condition or a single mom or something crazy like that, they can go do this business over the phone at any time of the day or night Mm -hmm. because you can call any time zone and they can provide, they can provide for their family and, and be involved when they couldn't before. So thank you for everything you've done. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Kara, you've been helping 40, what, what, what is it? 40 families per month. 40 families a month consistently 40 families a month and you're actually that's actually issued business correct not just submitted submitted (laughs) correct so you're probably submitting 50 to 55 to get 40 to be issued and stick on the books yes awesome well you guys are doing some awesome things and we wanted to hear from you so ginger i'm going to pass it to you and if you can share the marathon challenge that you guys are doing Mm -hmm the culture that you guys have on your team, uh, what somebody can expect if they're not in the business and they want to join us, or Mm -hmm. if they are in the business and they're make a change, what they can expect. So I'm going to pass it to you. (laughs) I actually wanted to go back to what you said a while ago, because I think that's a really important thing about virtual is that you, time zones, you can get a full work day in. If you, if you aren't a morning person, and you want to start at noon and you want to work till like 11 o'clock at night, you can literally work from Eastern to Pacific. We, a lot, a lot of us do that. I do. To where you can to hang Hawaii out with your family time. and then you can start at noon, like go to the gym, hang out with your family, start at noon and then work till like midnight. Cause I'm a night person and I think you are too. I do the opposite. I actually start at 6 a.m. See? And then I'm done by four in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And you can still get 40 plus hours. What about if you call Hawaii? Hawaii. Because like 11 p.m. Pacific would be 9 p.m. Hawaiian time. So you, so I have dialers. So I have it very specific as to what leads they dial when so they can book appointments at specific times. So, I mean, you have to be really, you have to be really scheduled and be really strict with your schedule. But good training, it allows you to work any lead at any time zone. That's huge. Yeah, I think that's cool. You can like extend your work day. Now, you guys work pretty closely together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually, so we, when we started doing virtual, we had a ton of people kind of reach out. And uh, I think once other companies realized we were now doing virtual over at Family First Life, now we had kind of everything. That was like, yeah, the comp, the. Oh, wait. So, so Kara, you weren't going to come to work with Family First Life because you wanted to do virtual and we weren't doing it. It was all in home is what was being promoted. And so. I was doing virtual primarily, and uh, before virtual, I was doing in-home. So I was very, very comfortable with in-home, and that's where I had developed my, a lot of my skills. But before that, um, I was thinking family first is all in-home. I, I, I don't want that. I, I like the flexibility of being able to 
do the mm -hmm. the professional on top, the PJs on the bottom, and <laughs> have my kids and <laughs> and uh, be able to to have that flexibility. And um, when they started promoting doing family first, was doing virtual. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> but you you have a reason why you specifically want to work from home because your family situation is a little different. Like talk about that. Yeah. So I actually I have a blended family. We have six kids. Um, 15, they just turned 16 year old triplets and we have three with special needs. So we have a lot of um, a lot of therapies. There's a lot of interesting things that we have to schedule around. Wow. And mm -hmm. so to be able to do that with this kind of industry and this kind of flexibility and still make a, um, a nice a nice uh, living for our family has been really, really enticing. That's awesome. I think too, um, it's kind of like excuse eliminator so that I wanted to talk about this marathon thing. She had this idea, but like when we started doing virtual, we had a lot of people reach out, you know, people that wanted to get into the industry, but they felt like they didn't, didn't want to drive. Mm -hmm. And you know, leads too. It solves a leads problem. It does. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but when Kara came over, she's probably the, op like I'm kind of a hot mess that just like work, like I, I work somehow and then she's super organized and super focused. And we kind of were having this issue of teaching other people how to do virtual and how to do telesales. And uh, her and her husband have kind of figured out a cool system. Talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I want to learn about that. So, um, so Brent and I, we do this business together and it's been really, um, it's been one of the few industries that we can work husband and wife together. You so mean, and not try to kill each other? <laughs> no, we didn't say that. <laughs> oh, my bad. Right. <laughs> I love him. Some days I don't like him, but I love him every day. <laughs> he probably feels the same. <laughs> so, you know, I had gone to a meeting and we had, we had heard that 20,000 is full time. And I've written 20,000 in the past, but wasn't very consistent. And so in the past industries that I've been in the past companies, it was they were celebrating. Writing like 20 policies a month. Right. And so when you're writing 20 policies a month, it was um, that was really celebrated. And it was um, it was celebrated highly. And when I came here, they said, no, 20 policies is just full time. So, well, 20 policies is part time. And the, the truth is, if you write 15 to 20 policies after your lead bills, your expenses, chargebacks, taxes, like you don't, you're not making significant money. That's definitely, mm -hmm. I agree. would you guys agree with yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can't, pr let's not pretend like we're, you, that's some big deal. But if you go to 40 or 50 policies in a month, mm -hmm. there's a point where your your expenses don't can't really go up that much more. I mean, they can if you get more leads, but... Very insignificant. Yeah. And the other thing is we're capable of whatever is really what we think we're capable of. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought it was crazy to write 10 policies in a week. Want to know a funny story? <laughs> Sean opened the company and he goes... Everyone can uh, write 10 policies a week if they're full time. And I had two people call me and say they're leaving because Sean is crazy and you can't <laughs> expect that of people. And I called Sean mad at him for saying on the national call that you should be writing f 10 policies a week if you're full time. Mm -hmm. And then I, I started to do it myself and believe I could do it. And then it became my new normal. That, that's exactly right. Your ceiling all of a sudden becomes your floor mm -hmm. because you now can do it. Yeah, hundred mm percent. -hmm. Yeah, it feels like I, I want to. I want to say to people like, if you're not ready to level up, you probably shouldn't come here. Like, if you're okay with mediocrity, then because when you come here, it's different. It is definitely different. You're, and you're different. I I had always been one of the top leaders for the previous company um, nationally, and then I came here. Oh, well, I need to step up my game a little. <laughs> yeah, you, you help 40 families because, like, that's what you do, right? But it's not, you're not splashed all over the leaderboards. Like, you're not celebrated for a yay. You help 40 families. Okay, what's next? Yeah, it's yeah. like, great. I think I need to help 100 this month. Like, We had this uh, agent in here, and he was telling us that at his previous company, he was number one. Mm -hmm. And I looked up 
in here and he would be like 300 and like 80 here yeah and i and and i i was it was it didn't mean to be mean but it sounded kind of mean i was like dude you have to stop saying you're number one mm -hmm. you were number one because you're number 380 <laughs> and then true. people true. on youtube were putting comments like that was so mean <laughs> but the point is is if you want to level up get uncomfortable yeah it it, it really pushed me substantially and kind of going back to this starting this running club it was I was really great I'm a great sprinter and so I could do things for a very short amount of time so I could do 20 families in a, in a week I could do you know 10 or 15 consistently but as soon as the bank account got hit for a great deposit I stopped mm -hmm. and so mm. yeah. this was one where it was not only Am I doing something? But now somebody else is holding me accountable to saying, Carrie, mm -hmm. you got to do this every single week consistently. Ha like have you ever tried not looking at your bank account? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> every no. Mind, who's a complete animal. Mm -hmm. He's not allowed to look at his bank account. His wife doesn't let him. And he just thinks he's broke. <laughs> she just moves it out of there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we only have $10. You need to go back out and help the family. That's and hilarious. he is an animal. Yeah. I love that idea. Uh, don't give Kyle any ideas. Oh, I don't let Brent see it. I kind of want to get locked <laughs> out of my own bank account. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting uncomfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dude, but let's go back. Like, I don't. Can you pinpoint the big difference that the running club has made in our team? Because well, I don't even know what the running club okay, is. Okay. So, yeah, so talk about tell it. us this. So when I had gone to that meeting, they said, you need to be consistently helping 20 families a month. Um, I stopped, I, I kind of, it was a shell shock for me because I could do 20 and I could do 25, but most of the time I was comfortable doing 15. Mm -hmm. 15 would get me by, but what I realized is it, it's not that different to do 15 to 20. It's just consistently doing it. And so I had been talking with my husband he said you need a, a buddy who's just going to hold you accountable mm -hmm. and that was it just holding you accountable to consistently week in week out schedule enough appointments so that you're helping at least 20 families a month and so we started talking to a few different people and they said I need this I need this mm -hmm. and we ended up developing a group of about 10 or so was in our initial club yeah. consistent and yeah. um, we've had some some huge people just make some significant changes. And it was it, one one gal, she had COVID. And she said, you know what? I, I can't be on this meeting. Um, I think I'm going to need to take a pause this week. And she showed up on video. We had a couple of general requirements. And she showed up. And it was one of her best weeks. And she said, the whole point of this club is to be the excuse eliminator. Mm -hmm. And she said, I could use COVID as an excuse. But I actually realized it was my purpose to go ahead and continue. And you working. can actually still sell from you, home. You can mm -hmm. still sell. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of stories. People. All right, I want to bring this up. So I, I went on like ten thousand appointments driving, in ten ten years. We have all my schedules and we're going through them. And one thing I do have is for sure a, like back problems. Mm -hmm. Like my, my back, pro I would assume it would hurt more than like someone else my age that didn't do all of that driving. And I didn't have a really nice car. The, the seats weren't that good. So I was just like sunk in them. Yeah. Um, but that's one perk. I think if you can, if you can dial in what you guys are doing, mm -hmm. you're not stuck in your car for hours driving. Mm -mm. And I am, I'm, I'm not against, I'm not against going in the home, but I have thought about that quite a bit. The other thing is how many people can you talk to during your drive time if you're if you're selling virtual? Uh, and then the other thing is leads. So like let's say you live in Anchorage, Alaska, and you want to build a team, a local team. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not going to be enough leads in Anchorage, Alaska for all your agents, but you could call anywhere in the U.S. and you can help virtually sell insurance to anybody mm -hmm. i mean even when we i first came over here and i was looking in the crm and all the major cities 
if you wanted to get, let's say, where we are in Salt Lake, if you wanted to get, oh, they're like, oh, no, no leads. But when you're virtual, you can actually look at the like the rural counties and just pick three, two, one, and build up. And those are the those are the people that are not getting called a bazillion mm-hmm, times. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, yep, mm-hmm. remember doing that? Yeah, that's huge. But I like any other perks. Now, one, what are the downfalls? So, like we just talked about some of the perks. Mm-hmm. A downfall for me, and you guys can give your thoughts on this, is. I would go to appointments sometimes where they probably wouldn't have answered the phone Mm -hmm. or they definitely didn't give me the time of day on the phone Mm -hmm. and they would buy a a policy. So I would assume I'd miss some of those. And then the no show rate is probably higher Mm -hmm. because if you go to their house and their home, even if they forget, they answer the door, but they, it's so easy to not answer your phone. Like I, I actually blocked any phone number that's not registered in my phone. My phone won't even ring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's a really good. So you basically don't make it an, an emotional thing where, because we used to both run in home. I used to do travel trips at our old company because there weren't any leads. And you just adjust the numbers. Because like you said a while ago, you don't have to pay for gas. You don't have to pay for hotels. Like there's an expense so just, that's gone. If, just, you, if you spend that extra extra money on leads it's an extra expense but Mm -hmm. it's not really truly overall an extra extra expense if you factor everything in and two and i don't know if this is popular thing to talk about but you have to think your what is your hourly worth right just kind of calculate that in your head like what you think it is yeah so when you help a family think about how much you make and think well that's how much i make an hour right so if you're Dialing, if you could pay somebody $15 an hour to dial, right? You figure if, if I have a dialer, if I have get a bunch of leads, right? Because I can afford them now because I'm not paying for gas or a vehicle or a hotel. And you have a dialer that's dialing while you're helping families. You can now stack 40 to 50 appointments a week. And you're helping families while somebody else is dialing and filling in where you missed. If you put no show, she automatically puts another person in there you just have to adjust the way that you do the business if that makes sense yeah that's huge i think for me from being able to schedule in home in home you could schedule maybe seven or eight appointments in a day and that was if you were really good my territory it was 45 minutes from one house to another Mm -hmm. and so at best i could maybe schedule nine hoping that somebody might not be there but then if they're not there you've got a lot of empty space where if you're doing virtual, you can have 15, 20 appointments in a day because you can schedule them on the half an hour. If they don't show up, that's still okay. You still sit with the same amount of people or more. That's huge. That's awesome. So you guys are doing the Marathon Club. And w- if somebody wanted to join your team and do this with you, how could they reach you guys? Give me your number. So our gatekeeper, our referee, is Brent, (laughs) and he manages the program. So it's 602-705-1245, and make sure you send him a text. He'll be happy to go ahead and give you all the details and see what what group or what club you'd be joining. We have half marathon runners who will schedule about 13 appointments a week. We have our marathon runners who schedule 26. Oh, because the marathon's 26 miles? Ah, you 26 see 26 and a half miles? And well, we <laughs> go with 26. Is it 26 and a half miles, it's though? 26.2. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to get a, a point two appointment. Mm-hmm. We'll yeah, work on that. Yeah. They're that slacking. might be a callback. <laughs> yeah. And then we have our Hall of Fame, who are the, the ones who are the elite group. Mm-hmm. And what does that do? That is <laughs> any any agent who wants to be driving towards being a Hall of Famer. How do you get kicked out of the groups? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> this is <laughs> so, it's a great question. So we actually have a, a few um, a few gatekeeper requirements. So the one is you have to be on time, uh, so very punctual. Is this every day? Monday. We do one call on Monday for for fifteen minutes. So we really try to limit um, the amount of um, scheduling that would be in addition to what would be already on their schedule. So 15 minutes that they show up for this particular meeting, we go over results, mm-hmm. um, and we go on video. And one of the requirements is to be on video so that way they know and we know that they're there to work. 
That's the accountability. So they got to have their Zoom camera on. They got to mm-hmm. have their Zoom camera. Uh-oh. Yeah. We have people with kids in their laps, We've had, but they're on because mm-hmm. um, it's that important for us to know that um, this is... They're like pre- they actually have to get dressed, present. too. Well, yeah. I mean... We hope so. <laughs> get their week started. Because yeah. it's an accountability. Monday at what time? Uh, Monday, it is at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. I like to do stuff that makes me, like, have someone to be accountable to. Like, today I did a Zoom call with a new team at 5 a.m. And I did it because I wanted to get up at 4. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wouldn't get up at 4 if I didn't have something to do at Mm 5. Yeah. So that that's one of the requirements. Another one is to book a certain number of appointments because we know that if you have enough appointments, that you have the best chance of success for results. So what's the gatekeeper going to say to me if I go, well, you know, I got a bad batch of leads. <laughs> that, yeah. So so it's a no whining zone, too. Yes. So, so mm-hmm. no training, no complaining. Like if you've got issues, you can talk to your upline or figure that out. You're here to work. So mm-hmm. you know what to do. We all know what to do at Family First Life. You buy leads, you work them, you help families, and then you rinse and repeat. It's really that simple. Yeah. So. And you share. Mm-hmm. All right, so check this out. What do you guys think about this? My friend John Wetmore, who's a like accountant, but I would say like maybe he's pretty smart with numbers. So he goes, hey, let's say you have, how many agents do we have in the field well, actually, this week, our team had like something around 27 or 2,800 people issue a policy, right? Mm-hmm. So 2,800 agents issue a policy. Let's say you have um, all of them tell each person that they sold a policy to, ask them if they're interested in making additional money virtually or in person mm-hmm. and uh, this is the way the business works. And if they're interested in getting in the business, then he's like, if you did that or asked if they had any referrals for people that do, they might give you three to five names, but that's 2,800 extra people per week that you're showing FFL to. What do you think about that? I think that's a hundred percent possible. I think that, I think The problem is I think people keep it to themselves. Like, especially we have something like this where there's no excuses. Why couldn't we duplicate? We could. And people are dying for something to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Genius, genius, genius. That is genius, right, Drew? (laughs) What an original idea. I mean, I did think of it, so. (laughs) 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 All right. Um, Yeah, so if, if anyone's out there doing that, I used to, someone told me that when I first started, and I used to do that. Mm-hmm. But think about how many people we can recruit mm-hmm. if we told th- just the people we sold policies to. Do you know what F- I... F- no, I'm sorry. Hold on. That yeah. that math is wrong. <laughs> That's 2,800 people sold one policy. But how many policies did 2,800 people sell combined? Mm-hmm. 20,000 probably? Yeah. So that's 20,000 people plus referrals per week. Dude, two main account. Yeah, I totally did the math. John would be so mad at me right now. Wetmore would be pissed if he heard that math I did. <laughs> Client to colleague. I do that a lot. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. She was just telling me about that this morning. She she writes thank you notes. Tell them, like, I was like, what? <laughs> and birthday cards so she can get referrals. <laughs> so I, after every policy that gets approved, I do a handwritten congratulations card. I don't tell them thank you because I'm not thanking them for their business. I'm thanking them that they're, I'm congratulating that they're taking care of their family. And um, then for their birthdays, I also send a handwritten birthday card. And um, oftentimes I'll send it to their beneficiary as well. That's legit. Now, do you sell, do you try to recruit them? Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right. So let me ask you guys this, because this was a debate today in the office. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm sending out a Christmas card to all of my customers. Mm-hmm. that I've had in the past. And that's a lot. It's a picture with me, Nicole, Atlas and AC, a mm-hmm. Christmas picture. Okay. And on the back, Mar, do we have the verbiage? I'll I'll just tell you what or like <laughs> it's not exact, but we had to vote. And the first one was it said uh and we put my ethos link on all of them. Smart. Uh-huh. So it said happy Happy holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, 
now that I have a growing family of my own, I understand the value of insurance even more. Mm-hmm. D- as we reflect during the holidays, if you decide you need additional coverage, you can get it in under five minutes by clicking this link below. You can quote it yourself and you can do everything. That was the one we went with. But what I wanted to put is I have a growing family now <laughs> and I'm trying to sell you more insurance so I can take care of them. <laughs> can you can, eat. can you please click the link below? I like that. To quote. Who shut that down? Oh, dude, I got outnumbered what? by everybody. You like that one? It's yeah. not safe yet. I, I, would, I would look at it and go, that's hilarious. Let's right. get some insurance from this guy. Like, did you put a QR code on there? Yeah. Oh, so smart. What if everyone at FFL just did one QR code and then did that? I'm just trying to feed my family. <laughs> All right, Mar, we're doing it. Ginger said. That's funny. <laughs> Mar, you hear that? I hear you. Because I was like, said. what's better? Some vanilla mm-hmm. message that gets thrown in the trash or someone that goes, hey, tells their whole family, look what this crazy Memorable. dude yeah. sent us. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. All right. Well, it's a wrap then. Okay. I need, I want one though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll send you one. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, that was totally off topic, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of ways. So somebody told me one time, and for anyone watching this, if you're in the business, pay attention to this. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me, if you have a cow, how many different ways can you monetize that cow? Mm-hmm. Well, Right now, and FFL still new, it's only like we're just getting the meat off. Mm. But how many other ways? Do you guys know? I don't know. What do you mean? Like, within like you can FFL? make milk? No, oh. I'm saying an actual cow. <laughs> oh. I don't. Great steaks. When I was a dairy farmer. You got steaks. You got. Chocolate milk. You got the skin. Cheese. Oh. Skin. Oh, we're not killing the cow. Oh, no. Yeah, you're killing the okay. cow. Beef. Well, <laughs> before you kill it, don't Thank they you, get that's great. beef, skin, cowhide? Oh, that's a good one. Like utter cream. <laughs> Look, there's a lot. I don't know. Okay. I think. Hey, Drew, can you Google that? <laughs> this is important. <laughs> how is he doing that? <laughs> that Nobody awesome. likes that one. Drew, Google how many how many different things you can do with a cow. <laughs> but while he's but while he's googling that like but i mean i just thought of this so i i don't like at night i'm like okay i'm gonna look at tiktok for a minute and they, if you get on there they're always talking about a side hustle and they're always talking about affiliate marketing this has just occurred to me but is it the ethos link like an a, like an ultimate affiliate marketing ultimate. like why would you put that link in every video it is oh we just put it on our main website we put it we're putting it everywhere mm-hmm Email signature. Twelve surprising ways to eat to use the cow without e- eating a bite. <laughs> okay, you don't even have to eat it. Let's hear it. Um, uses of cows: bones, jewelry, and serving wear, such as utensils and cups, <laughs> <laughs> hooves and bones. Uh, it doesn't say that in here. Fat. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Adrenaline glands, steroids. <laughs> so weird. It says that? Insulin. Oh. Salt stone. I don't know that word. Um, I don't know if this is what you were looking for. <laughs> All right. Well, the point of what I was trying to say is there's a lot more with what we're currently doing mm-hmm. than, mo- that, than most agents do. So example, they help the p- client with one policy and they are a hit and run agent and disappear. Opposed to helping the client with one policy, helping their family, getting the beneficiaries numbers, calling them and offering to help them with insurance, Mm -hmm. uh, recruiting them, seeing if they know any, being a networking machine. And I think like the fact that that FFL is where it is without that is impressive. But imagine if you add all those things in. Yeah. I mean, we're, we've just scratched the surface. We just scratched the surface, yeah. On like people are figuring this thing out. Like people are doing Medicare and and they're doing the Ethos link and affiliate marketing and TikTok and Instagram and yeah. All right, so back to the side hustle thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, Drew, can you Google this? How many people have a side hustle in the United States? And what's the average income if it says that? According to Google, we know it might not be completely accurate. 
I saw this morning that somebody right. had posted Amazon dropship that the average person makes two hundred thirty four thousand a year just drop shipping with Amazon. Forty five percent of Americans have a side hustle in twenty twenty two. The average monthly income from a side hustle is only four hundred eighty three. Dollars Americans spend an average of 13 hours per week on their side hustles. The global gig economy is expected to be worth 455 billion by the end of this year. Okay, so 45 percent of people have a side hustle. Average income, according to Google, is 483 dollars. What type of opportunity if someone really knew? Because insurance has a has kind of like a boring <laughs> reputation. Yeah, like. When I was uh, <laughs> looking for another career, I, I didn't have a college degree. And most of the other, I had been in the hotel business for almost 20 years and looking for an industry that wasn't open 24 hours a day because that really blew. And so I was looking for a different opportunity, but the kind of income that I was needing to replace, you need a college degree or experience. And so I found a, an ad and it said, Make six figures from it home. It wasn't FFL's ad, right? It wasn't. Nope. <laughs> it was just a, a really generic ad, and it said make six it figures It was just an home. insurance ad just it to just work somewhere else. Just to work, and I'm like, I don't even know what this is, but work from home, make six figures, okay. <laughs> so I, I applied, and then I found out it was insurance. I'm like, ooh, I don't know about but that. But that was an ad not with FFL. <laughs> <laughs> that was an ad not, not. with FFL. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. like, you, we were talking this morning, too, if you wanted to do something – like we do and make the income that we make if you i like i would make it equal with starting a business and mm -hmm. if you want to start a business you're looking at a minimum twenty thousand. well let's clarify this <coughs> if you start a business you have no guarantees mm -mm. none and there's a lot of, a lot you, of up front. there's outgoing money you can lose money mm -hmm. working with us is starting your own business you have expenses you can lose money mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't work if you don't work yeah well, if you don't work, if you don't work smart, if you don't learn, if you don't get good, mm -hmm. it's the not just really someone could just year. not bang on doors all day and not make they could have money going out and they could not not know what to say and not make a dollar. Honestly, I, I mean, I'm just this may be scandalous. I don't think anybody has to be even great. I, 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 I would take someone who wasn't wasn't great and wasn't good and wasn't articulate, but they had a work ethic and they were consistent. I could work with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you don't have to be special. I think it's the purpose of the marathon club mm -hmm. we had a girl that came and she was single mom and she came and she really wanted to know how to do virtual and telesales and she we made her wait to join the marathon you can't you have to wait like every month you have to wait till there's like re-enrollment and can she I, waited can i join your guys' team <laughs> you yeah. could start in january yeah you have to wait it's till not january. enrollment period <laughs> open enrollment is closed <laughs> Dude, are you serious <laughs> <laughs> But it's important, like she did, and she was helping four families a month. We just asked her that, and what did she tell you? She She's was doing now, now to twenty nine, twenty nine families for a single mom. In super in cool. Three and a half weeks, she had mm -hmm. she had been able to make a huge difference for her family. Yeah, so we, we were in a meeting, and uh, one of the hashtags of like we were trying to think of like a company like motto or a hashtag for the company leading into the new year after the conference. And I don't think we've shared it with anybody, but we ended up coming up with putting the hashtag as hashtag do your part. I like that. Mm. And it, and this was Sean's idea and it was around like do your part when it comes to helping share the opportunity with people, mm -hmm. helping, helping your customers and making the, as much of an impact on all the negative things going on in the world or in the U or in the economy or just mm -hmm. in general making an impact by doing your part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we thought, I thought that was pretty cool. I like it. I think a lot of people, I don't know why people don't share the opportunity. I, th I think that they think that they have to train somebody else and it like would get in the way of their own production or I think that's crazy. I think you should, that should be part of your job is to think, I need to duplicate myself at least four times this month. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. That's the secret to doubling your business. All right. So leaders create l more leaders. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing that? By example, like you can't look at your kids and say, don't do this. And then you do it. So I, I feed my family and then I say, look at my example. Mm-hmm. 
that's it. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Uh, any tips you guys have? Do you read? Read? Do you try to keep a positive mindset? Do you do it? And I want to share this. Mm -hmm. I did read in the book the happiness uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. No, the happiness advantage. That's what it's called. Yeah. Have you read that? I have read that. That's actually a really good book. Yep. But it's actually like proving scientifically that mm -hmm. if you are in a good mood, you perform better, you learn faster, you're sharper. And there was a, a statistic in there that said people that are generally happy will sell like 25% more than people who are not. And then the whole argument is when you're successful, do you become happy or are you happy? And that makes you successful. Which one comes first? I think happy. Happiness. Yeah. And then you, this is a really good thing that you bring up. So I'm going to put this here, just lay this here. So this year, <laughs> this year we have a theory that, um, if, if you exercise in the morning, like getting your brain, like going, blood, like you just set up blood to your brain. I knew if I get up at four, then I'll be like at five. And then, you know, you're ready to attack your day by seven thirty. So I told Kara, I said, Hey, I'm thinking I want to run a marathon this year. And she goes, Oh dude. And I'm like, I'm thinking you should too. This isn't like the marathon club. This is an, this actual, is an actual real marathon. actual in, in light of the marathon club. Why don't we, if we do this at work, like I've figured out how to work, but like if you, if you get all, uh, all elements of your life together, that's, a, that's amazing. So I challenged her to sign up for marathon. I think she should. I'm going to run it in June. I think other people should come run it with me too. It's in Utah. <laughs> you should come. Well, if anybody wants to run a marathon, mm -hmm. you can contact 5K? Ginger. Yep. 5K? No, oh, an Adele. actual marathon, oh, dude. 26 point. Now, I don't like to drive that far, but she's asking me. Are to you go. going? Um, Are you going to do yeah. it? So the, the agreement was... I would be open to it. And Wait, I'm, are you not committing right now? No, I'm, I, I will um, officially. What's that? I'm officially going to commit right now. Oh, okay, <laughs> oh. excellent. And and okay. when we complete it, yeah, we're going to go to Australia. I'm going to send her to Australia when she runs a marathon. Are you going to go too? Maybe. Yes. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Uh, yes. You're What's in commit? Australia? She just no always one, wanted to go. Just always want to go. Like life is really short, so something we're doing. Me and my family, and I think a lot of people have done this, but you and your seven daughters. No, just we just have we only have two left. So you have seven daughters, though, right? Mm -hmm. We have seven. No boys. No boys, <laughs> and a granddaughter. Oh wait, we have a grandson. We just had a grandson. Oh, but so there is a boy. We, so our youngest that are left at home, they're both deaf, and I thought, you know, I, I completely work completely deaf. Completely, they wear cochlear implants. And what, what does that do? So they can hear. Oh, so they can hear. Yeah, they wear their device and it helps them to hear. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm going to turn 50 in June. That's part of the reason why I'm going to run this marathon. But, you know, your life flashes before your eyes. But I thought if we can work virtually, why do I have to, to stay in my same old house and same old routine? Why can't we just travel around the United States and I work? Monday to Thursday, like a dog, 40 hours. Like I'm pretty dogmatic about it, but we've had such adventures in the last four months. Like we've done some cool stuff. Like what? Like we went and uh, traveled out to Missouri and um, caught like an impromptu Garth Brooks concert in the middle of nowhere. He just showed up. Um, you were down in Memphis? We, yeah, we were down in Memphis and Nashville downtown. So, um, and then we were in the hurricane in Daytona beach just cause we were there and, we were in a tornado in Kansas. Like we've done crazy stuff. We've taken her, and she's been with Seems us. Like follow you. <laughs> well, the thing wait, is, you go too? No, we actually we had gone to. Uh, I have family in Wisconsin, and so um, my parents are eighty two, and um, they used to come. I live in Arizona, and they used to come to Arizona every summer or every winter for about three months, and then they sold their place during COVID. So we have had very little communication other than actually talking on the phone. So we made we made a decision. We said, you know what, we do have the flexibility. So we took a month and we went and stayed with them for a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And you can, if you're disciplined, now are you, you can, what are you, how, you're just flying around? Nope. So <laughs> I, <laughs> so I got Airbnbs in all kinds of different places. Like I checked their Wi-Fi. I have a second bedroom so I can have my space. 
and I brought my whole office with me. We travel with my big 27 inch desktop that we call baby because we don't want her to get hurt because it's our living. <laughs> and that got, that got stuck in Florida, didn't it? During the hurricane, it did. It got stuck in. They wouldn't let us back in. I was in. wondering why you were in Florida. Yeah, you were just traveling around. Yeah, we were. I was just like, did she move to Florida? Because you had you mm -hmm. didn't come in because the hurricane. Yeah. You travel with a desktop. Yep. <laughs> no laptop. A big one. I have a laptop too. Oh, you got the tower. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, I had a I I, I had a thank you card that I was going to send to Ginger and Kyle, and I said I don't even know where to send it. <laughs> they have no address. But you know what we've done? Our daughter's eighteen, and because she's deaf, we've taught her how to like we do vocabulary when we're driving places. We drive. We have our dog. And we drive in the car, and I've taught her how to start a business. Like, I've taught her more in her senior year than a lot of people at 18. So I homeschool. I work from home. We take adventures on the weekends. Like, why do you have to wait till you're 65 or 70 to live your life? You're, yeah, it's true. So that's what we're doing. It's a lot of flexibility in that. Okay, so let's let's wrap up with this. You're, you you made the comment your life flashes before your eyes. Mm -hmm. So what motivates you to be successful in this business and not just have fun all the time? I think that there's a finish line here at Family First Life. Like there's a goal in building a team and being able to build something for your family. I think about Zach and he's such a young guy and a young family and you, you've built something I'm for your family. I'm old now though. You, 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 yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like yesterday everyone was like, you're so, you're the youngest person in the company. And then now I'm like, whoa, I'm 15 years older than the people starting now. Really old. Yeah, actually you are really old. I know. Um, and then they, uh, the other day, some agents were like, hey, you know, want to go to the club with us and i was like Dude, i have two kids and yeah. i go to bed I, I go to bed at like 10 yeah i'm not i can't go to the club <laughs> i can't hang anymore i wanna my brain says yes my body says no um but no that's that motivates me i want to build a business i've been able to do that successfully here we've I, we've grown since we came to family first life from my other company our agency has doubled we've grown like crazy and agents are having success. It's pretty incredible. It pretty much has everything, right? Mm -hmm. Culture, <laughs> yeah. commission. Yeah. But would you agree that like everything's better if you have a successful week? Like I used to say back in the day when I was in the field, I would say if I, if I ran all the appointments I was supposed to and I wrote some policies and I worked really hard and I got up early. I did what I said I was going to do when I would get home that having a beer would taste better than just normally having a beer. Nothing gives you anxiety worse than procrastinating. Bit lying to yourself. Like just not like why, why give yourself that anxiety of stressing? I think that's the secret too of the running club is that a lot of agents will come over and they'll have amazing success and they'll make amazing great money. I tell a lot of young agents, I'm like, you're going to come here, you're going to make ridiculous money, and then you're going to, oh, I'm going to buy a new car. Well, they might make ridiculous money. They might. They, they might. They could Some people also can. make yep. none and lose money yep. spending it on leads like any other business. But I think the biggest deal is, is that if you're going to be, you should be consistent. That's what the running club will do is you have to show up on Monday and they're going to go over numbers in front of everyone. And you don't want to have a zero there. I don't. Mm -hmm. Well, you never told me how you get kicked out. What do they do? <laughs> and people have. There, there has been. Um, there are some commitments. And one of the things that we have really focused on is not goals. It's commitments. Mm -hmm. So it's activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can always change your goal. Your goal can fluctuate exactly. too. But your activity can mm -hmm. be what you base your success on. Mm -hmm. So we have certain benchmarks on how many appointments should be scheduled each week. Um, and we don't really focus as much on AP because if you're doing the activity, the AP comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you said. Just working, it's going to come. Because you are going to have bad weeks. Mm -hmm. But if you're consistently working and filling the pipeline, then it doesn't really affect you. Yeah. Or you might want to take a vacation. 
and so you're not working that week, and that's okay. Yeah. I always would just work. Well, I don't like long vacations personally. Like, I feel like after like three days, I'm like, I want to, I need to go do something. Or something. <laughs> yeah, we know that, Drew. You, yeah. It's gonna be a long three we'll weeks. Yeah. Hey, how? Hey, hey Drew. Birthday. Drew's going on Factory Fresh. is going on vacation for three weeks. Okay. In a row. You're gonna just. How <laughs> long do you think he's actually gonna be gone? He's for? gonna be texting you in three days. Mars is zero. Four. <laughs> Four. Zero. Mars is zero. What? Zero days. What? Uh, that's great. He's gonna have FOMO. <laughs> All right. So. What I've always done, which I've loved, is I could change the days I work, mm -hmm. but I could still cram the activity in, and I never skip a beat week to week. Mm -hmm. And I've done that since I was 18 years old. Yeah. So it's that's something that's... It's just you can... Everything is interchangeable in your schedule mm -hmm. to make room for things that you really, really, really want to do. Yeah, but you have to like, you have to preset your schedule because if you say, oh, okay, today is going to be a free, like if you like go, like think as oh, you go, you're that's, done. you're dead because you're always going to justify like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. But if you on Monday say this is my schedule, then you can set it. Okay. So uh, lastly, ffllconvention.com, a free conference for insurance agents that has... Uh, a ton of integrity partners, Hall of Fame producers training. It's at the Marlin Stadium in Miami, and it is free. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is, I don't have the exact dates, February 2nd through the 5th, I believe, but you can go look it up. It's the 1st through the 4th. Okay, the 1st through the 4th. And what I want to say here is if you're watching this and you're in insurance, you should go. If you're uh, w working with us already and you don't decide to go, I'm so passionate and I'm so passionate about the value this brings to people that I've told a few people this and I want to share this with you. If I, if somebody doesn't go, then they're going to call me and they're going to need help with on something that we just learned, like a th very thorough in a very thorough way mm -hmm. for three days and i could be spending time with my kids or my wife and this person wasn't really committed to mastering this their craft in this industry in most cases unless it's like a crazy emergency so what i say is i actually don't i am not even interested in working with them if they need my help, but they're not willing to make that commitment. I've also seen that there, I haven't seen any big manager or producer that doesn't go to these big events. And I just want your guys' thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, hundred percent. There's a big difference this year. I think our whole team is registered to go. It's like a priority. What if you're in pre-licensing? I think it's even more important because then you have a more like clear focus on this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to do. What if you're in pre pre licensing? Pre pre means you're not. <laughs> pre pre means you're. <laughs> you're not even, not even in thinking about insurance. If you're not thinking about insurance, you should still come. Because <laughs> then you will be. That is true. Mm -hmm. If what if you're like what did you say earlier? You hated your job. You hated oh. your boss, but you loved your job. Yeah, so I, I I hated my boss, but I loved my job. And then I had a different one where I loved my boss and hated my job. So if you're in that situation, you're thinking, what can I do with my life? Mm -hmm. You should come to this free event. Right. Uh, if somebody is going there, I've seen a lot of people. Let me tell you guys this, actually. And I mentioned this on something else. And this is actually a lot of maybe too much to share, but who cares? My first conference, I was 18 to an, an insurance conference. My manager, <laughs> my manager <laughs> goes and he's getting everybody beers and mm -hmm. everybody's drinking. It's like this huge party. And then he goes, Hey, you know, let's go out. Mm -hmm. So I jump in the van with him and a bunch of other people. We end up at a strip club 
It was my first time at a strip club. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> nice timing, that. Drew. That was good. <laughs> and I remember oh. like it was yesterday. It was called BYOB in oh, okay. in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Which stands for bring your own beer. Mm-hmm. And he came in there with a huge case of beer. And we got back to the conference the next day mm-hmm. when the conference started. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. That's a long night. That's a long night. So I did show up, but I, I, I couldn't pay attention to anything. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So, I, and then you go a couple years later, I learned like that I was going to learn things and become better in business and become a better person and learn from mm-hmm. people that are successful. And I started, hey, I skipped all that. And I go, I, I'm going to go to bed. I am going to get up early. I'm going to, I want to be there to remember everything. I want to talk to the people that are positive, not negative. Mm-hmm. I want to be around the people that are winning. And I skipped all of that. So I know you guys can't probably relate on that level, but what advice would you guys have to somebody to get the most out of this event? I can relate to that, but we won't go there. Um, I think that we went last year, it was our first year here, and we went by ourselves with like two agents. And this year we told the team, we're not asking, we are telling you, you have to do this. This is this is going to set your entire year. After our experience and the speakers, Dave Andrew, oh, like there were so many. Well, this year is insane. Changed like my whole thought Damon process. Damon John, uh, this is like a, I would say somebody normally would charge $5,000 to go to this. To hear all these guys. To hear all these guys. Yeah. They, they do charge it's that. It's a business. If you're, if you're serious about owning your own business, this is a business. If but it's free. I want FFL to charge, <laughs> but they won't. <laughs> We've been in a place where they used to charge. I had to take out a loan just to be able to go to a conference. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> was... you're broke. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, thank goodness we don't have to pay for conference anymore. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. All right, so if you do go, get the most out of it. Yeah, go to eat all the sessions. Be careful who you listen to. Mm-hmm. What if someone's having their own seminar in the hallway? <laughs> Sir, no disrespect. Just have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right. <laughs> that happens everywhere. Is Sean here? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he is listening. Um, yeah, that happens a lot. You know, when you go to conferences. But like, I'm just, just like, come dude, to listen. To, go to listen speakers. and write down the few things that you can mm-hmm. apply to your own business that will change your own business, and just chill. Pick three things. Listen for the three things that are going to change your life. Yeah, I'll tell you the three things I learned last year. Like I literally, I think I got this from Dave Answered to take a cold shower in the morning and wake my brain up. He talked about how he advises people. Like there's things that people are doing that I'm like, wow, that's, that changed my life. So that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So everybody that watches this, we will see you there. Yep. Yes. And thank you guys so much for coming in. If you're interested in working with them, you can reach out to them. Your number was, we'll put, we'll put your phone number in the, um, comment section or something sure. so people can see it uh other than that thank you guys for joining us thank you for everything you do and we'll see everybody